Welcome to Riot Fest Toronto 2015. My name is Andrew Epstein. Uh, we're here for some metal, some punk, some hip hop, some rock. We've got so much going on. There's carnival rides and a shitload of food. Uh, our first interview is with rapper Jazz Cartier, Toronto native. Uh, he's already got some American exposure. He doesn't sound like what your typical Canadian rap star would sound like. Uh, definitely does not have shades of sort of that 90s style that got really popular. We're going to talk about uh, what's different about his style, uh, his experience that he's had and uh, what it's like playing for uh, international audiences. All right, I'm backstage uh, here at Riot Fest Toronto 2015. Uh, I'm here with Jazz Carche after uh, a pretty crazy set this morning. How you doing? Pretty good. Pretty good. Tired. Tired? Yeah, man. For sure. So did you sleep at all last night since coming from, uh, you said De it was Denver, Chicago that you came from yesterday? No, uh, last night I came from uh, BC. Uh, we flew in, at, I, I landed at like midnight. Didn't go to bed till like five. And um, I had to wake up at seven to get my hair cut. So it was exhausted. Yeah. Uh, before we talk about you know Toronto and today and uh, music and stuff, let's talk about how the last two Riot Fests have gone. You know, I saw you make some posts about it, and uh, you know that to me the narrative is that you know from the reception that you got there, that Canadian rappers don't get that kind of reception usually in the U.S. That's the um, the narrative around Canada. So you know that that seemed like a pretty big deal for you to get such a huge reception in those two cities. Yeah, it's been a uh it's been, it's been pretty good, you know. Um, uh, granted, like these, my like first first few festival dates that, that I've, I've ever done, and like it's just been a year since we started putting things out. So uh, for the reception to be as good as it is now for, for like all three dates, you know, I'm stoked. I think there's. Uh I don't know when I when I first listened to your record, it, it's uh, I guess it kind of threw me a little bit because this is not what I expect to come out of Canada, especially Toronto. And we're used to, you know, one style. We're used to like what came up in the '90s and stuff like that. But it seems that that, that your voice and your style has this first sort of, I guess, modern edge to it that I haven't heard coming out of Canadian MCs in a long time. What do you think about that? I mean, I'm happy to hear that. Uh, I know, like. A big part of it is is is, is because um, a lot of rappers from Toronto don't really leave Toronto, so like their uh, perspective on things is you know it's just it's it's not as broad as mine because I traveled when I was younger, you know. So um, I think uh, I think the traveling stuff helped me a lot, and um, just 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 uh, knowing who I am as a person and like having that confidence behind the mic and like the ability to uh, paint perfect pictures, you know. That sort of worldview, does that affect your your style and your flow as well as you know the lyrics that you drop? Because you you say like those you know they don't really leave Toronto, so you know maybe you're you're onto something there because they do sort of sound like they always stay the same no matter how old they get. So is that it? Does that af affect you as an artist as much as it does you know on a personal level? You know what I mean? Yeah, uh, it affects me as an artist as much as, as it does personally because um, it's just like. I guess I view things differently, you know, um, especially like living in the States for so long, there's like a different mentality there than, than there's in Canada, you know, and, and I think, I think people know that and then there's a big divide, you know, so um, I think having that young and like having that instilled in me now and it's, it like plays a very big part, you know. Um, so let's talk about, you know, how that works in Canada, you know, you had a really big response today, you know, it wasn't that sort of local artist sort of homecoming set you know it did feel like more like a touring set you know what i mean so um does it does it matter as much to you to get that kind of home reception or you know is it is it more exciting for you because of your travels to to see all these people go crazy when you when you go there uh it still matters and like it doesn't matter where i'm playing like i'm still getting nervous before the show <laughs> you know um yeah this one this one was also uh also a bigger one too because like i'm looking in the crowd and there's people that i know you know so it's like there's like there's always that but um you know i think uh i think the reception today is pretty good um it's toronto though you know so yeah 
uh, let's talk about like some of your biggest tracks that you had. You know, you played them towards the end. We have New Religion and Dead or Alive. You know, what what exactly is it about these ones that sort of? Uh, I mean, I'm looking at your SoundCloud and the plays are crazy uh, for certain tracks, especially these. You know, what is it about these tracks that are the sort of people have latched onto in a bigger way, especially at home? Like this is you know kind of unusual. Like I said, um, with like New Religion, Dead or Alive, and you know the holy shit and stuff like. They're like preachy, you know. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, and I think a lot of the songs make sense once you see it live. Yeah. You know, because you know, like you like feel the energy right there. Right. You know, and um, for a lot of people, this is the first time seeing me, so uh, I think I think those those did very well today. You know, granted, like I only had thirty minutes, you know, so like there's there, there's only so much I could do in those thirty minutes, you know, and and, and like having like the slots, the like slots pushed back scrambling you know it was it, there was just like a lot of kinks that could have been worked out and like done better but you know those songs you know like regardless of what's happening they still ring off you know so um so you know i know that you've uh you're working on new material there's some new stuff you know right very close on the horizon um what can you tell us so far about that i'm in the studio every single day yeah. it's like as much as possible Lance is here actually. I I asked him if we can get in tonight, just because you know that's my uh, mentality. But um, the new project's pretty much done. Uh, it's 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 gonna be a big leap from uh, Paradise, huge leap lyrically, sonically. A lot of good things. I, I have like a lot of Toronto artists on it too. Yeah, I'm, I'm branching out more. Like on the last project, there was no features. This project, there's there's gonna be a little bit more features, but uh, a lot more, a lot more uh, theatrics. You know. Are you already sort of bored of your old material? Is that frustrating? Are you ready to break out with the new stuff? Is it? Are you are you itching? I'm not. I'm not more so bored with the old material. It's more so. Uh, it's like I make it. Like I make like five new songs every week, right? So so it's like I'm constantly playing those, and it's like I just want to do it live. You know, like like I'm so. I'm so eager to like do it, but I need to, I need to cool on that. But um, yeah, uh, I think top of the top of next year, some shit's gonna roll out. Yeah, for sure. To me, there's a lack of emphasis on live performances in hip hop these days, and you've been talking so much about how people need to see you live to fully realize your music. That's something that I don't think is always necessary in hip hop anymore. Is that something that you've always done intentionally, or is it just sort of the, the nature of the, the art that you yourself create? It's always been a big thing for me. I'm like gonna like going to see an artist and then leaving underwhelmed because it's not the same as like you know listening to the record. Um, I think a lot of rappers uh, they like get tired and, and like it like becomes a routine, you know, like having to go to different cities and play like like certain songs. But um, I, I don't know, man. Like that's my favorite part. Like like if I'm doing a song, I'm imagining myself doing a live before the song's even done, you know. So. I love my live performance. So, yeah. uh, is it hard to uh, to get insured for your live performances? Because you did, you know, you're climbing up uh, the rigging today. Uh, you know, they're they're bugging you to get off the stage, going over time. You're jumping in the audience and having the audience take care of you. You know, is it is it hard to get insured for your live shows? You ever run into problems? Uh, no, I think I think all my shows we uh, we uh, get insurance. <laughs> yeah, uh, we realized that we had to get up on that once we. Uh, Started to see how hectic things can get, but um, I don't know. Thank, thankfully, no one got hurt today. <laughs> thankfully, no one gets hurt ever. You know, um, few people get stepped on, but you know that's like that's like that's like normal. That's yeah, it's fine. Yeah. What's the like? You know, what was the situation that made you realize that? That made you realize that you had to uh, get a little protection there on stage. I see a lot of people getting sued. You know, uh, and like instances that can like come up from like shows that happened a year ago. You know, artists get sued for that, so um, I'm not trying to get sued <laughs> at all. You know, so uh, I'm 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 very careful about like you know what I'm doing, how I'm stepping, how far I go out. You know, so yeah. Uh, Jess Garcia, I want to thank you so much uh, for speaking to me today. Uh, great show. I wish you all the best on future shows and new material that's coming out. And uh, do you have any final words? Thank you guys. You know, thank you, Rye Fest, everybody. Yeah. Backstage at Ride Fest Toronto 2015 with Jazz Carche. This is Andrew Epstein for Zombatrol Productions, and we'll see you next time.
see you on the street, nigga. I don't give a fuck. My click teeth, nigga. And we ain't fucking with you. See you on the street, nigga.